You know, if you really want the full experience of building your own electric guitar, you really need to make your own pickups. Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. Today's video is going to be a continuation of my Delta guitar build, which is the guitar where I'm combining the features that I like from a headless guitar with the features that I like from a traditional guitar that has a headstock. And where I'm at now is I'm ready to make the pickups. So I'm going to use my CNC winder to wind the pickups. And I'll kind of walk you through the whole process that I follow to make the pickups. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to make a special announcement about the pickup winder. So stay tuned for that. Now let's jump in and get started. The first thing I had to do was take a small diamond file and file away some of the rough edges on the inner core of the bobbin. If I didn't do that, during the winding process, the wire could catch on those rough edges and break. Then I took my digital calipers and I measured the inner dimensions of the bobbin's core, and that includes the length, width, and height. Those dimensions were then input into my CNC winder software which will generate the G-code that runs the machine. And to do it, I need to also include the turn count as well as the desired motor RPM. Then on another tab, I can select the direction that I want to wind the bobbin, clockwise or counterclockwise. And from there, I can decide what kind of a traversing pattern that I want to use. And in this case, I chose a maximum scatter. I use two methods to attach a bobbin to the bobbin plate. I'm using double-sided sticky tape, which keeps the bobbin from spinning around on the base plate. And then I'm also using a mini lathe live center, which will keep the bobbin from flying off the plate when it gets heavy with wire. I've also fabricated a small length of aluminum that has two screws that fit into the holes for the bobbin's pole pieces, and then a center hole that accepts the tip of the live center and that holds everything together while the bobbin is spinning. The wire comes off the spool and is fed through a tensioning mechanism. And then from there, it runs through the traversing mechanism where it is then deposited onto the bobbin. The coil wire is then fed onto the bobbin and I need to make sure that I have enough extra wire to solder on the leads later. So I'll take about a four or five inch length of wire and I'll tape that to the face of the bobbin winding plate. A few turns of wire are fed onto the bobbin as I adjust the traversing mechanism to place it into the start position of the winding operation. The plan was to wind 7,000 turns of, of 43 gauge wire onto the bobbin, so I programmed the counter to stop at exactly 7,000 turns. Now I can start to wind my coil by sending the G-code file that I wrote earlier to the CNC winder using Universal G-code Sender. Winding a coil with 7,000 turns of wire takes about five and a half minutes, and when the counter reached 7,000 turns, the winder automatically shut off. When the winding process was complete, I cut the coil wire at the spool and then untaped the uh, start lead of the wire from the face of the bobbin plate so that I could remove the bobbin. Now it was time to start assembling the humbucker and I began the process by pressing the slugs into the slug bobbin. Then using a simple homemade bit chucked into my cordless drill, I was able to install the adjustable pole pieces.
Each coil is going to have two lead wires, a black one for the start of the coil and a red one for the finish. And I pre-tinned those with solder in preparation with attaching them to the ends of those leads. After making those solder connections, I'll use a small length of heat shrink tubing to protect the solder joint. A quick check with the multimeter shows that 7,000 turns of wire is going to yield about 7,000 ohms of DC resistance. Now obviously I can't let those black and red lead wires just hang there, so I roll them up and place them on the sides of the bobbin and then cover them with some bobbin tape and then I'll wrap the entire bobbin in bobbin tape to protect the coil windings. Next it was time to prepare the base plate and the first thing I have to do is apply a small blob of solder on the inside of the plate. This is where the shielding for the four conductor wire will be soldered to the base plate in order to ground the base plate. Then I fed the wire through the exit hole in the bottom of the base plate. At this point I had to decide what kind of a magnet I was going to use for this pickup. Since it's going to yield about 14,000 ohms of DC resistance, I decided I needed to use a magnet stronger than the Alnico 5 that the humbucker kit came with. So I chose instead an Alnico 8 which will help to restore some of the trouble that is lost when you wind such a high output pickup. A metal six hole spacer bar is installed on the back of the bobbin with the adjustable pole screws so that the screws will all be evenly and consistently magnetized. The Alnico 8 magnet was then installed so that the south pole is up against that six hole metal spacer. The bobbin is then mounted permanently to the base plate using small brass screws, one at each end. A plastic spacer is placed along the outside edge of the base plate and will support the slug bobbin as it's installed with those tiny little brass screws, again one at each end. And as you can see here, I have a bunch of wires that need to be connected together in order for the pickup to work. I use the Seymour Duncan color code for hooking up four conductor wire. And so what I have to do is pair up those wires and then twist the ends together. Of course, twisting the wires together isn't enough, so I'll solder them as well. And then to protect those solder joints, I use a small length of heat shrink tubing. Those wires are then tucked in between the two bobbins and the whole pickup is wrapped up in cloth humbucker tape. So that's basically what goes into making a humbucker pickup. And the, the methods and techniques are, are pretty much the same, whether you're making single coils or P90s or other types of pickups. Uh, there are some subtle differences, but it's generally the same concept. When I make the neck pickup, I'm going to make some subtle differences that are, are really important. And one of those is when I wind the coils for the neck pickup, I'm going to put fewer turns of wire on the neck pickup than I would the bridge pickup. And the reason for that is volume. Because the neck pickup is placed where the strings are vibrating with greater amplitude, 
the neck pickup can sound louder. If I was going to put the same number of turns on the neck pickup that I did the bridge pickup, as you play the guitar, when you switch from the bridge pickup to the neck pickup, it would suddenly get louder. So to balance that out, I reduce the number of turns. How much do I reduce it? There really is no rule of thumb. I shoot for um, 75 to 80% of the number of turns that I put on the bridge pickup. So if the bridge pickup has 7,000 turns of wire, the neck pickup is gonna have about 5,500 turns. And like I said, there's no uh, rule of thumb for this. Now, I suppose there, you could probably do some math to calculate what would be optimal. I don't do that, even though I could, simply because that math can't take into one or into consideration one important factor, and that is playing style, uh, how you attack those strings. That just doesn't factor in. So I just sort of shoot for that. 75 to 80% of what the bridge pickup was wound, and that seems to work pretty well. Another key difference is the position of the bobbins. With the uh, bridge pickup, uh, I typically will install it so that the slugs are towards the center, uh, the, the center of the space between the two pickups, and the adjustable pole pieces are up against the bridge. But with the neck pickup, I do the opposite. The screws are away from the bridge and closer to the nut, and the slugs are uh, closer to that center of that space between the two pickups. That's just really a nod to tradition. Uh, if you look at a lot of guitars that have two humbuckers that have adjustable screws and slugs, you'll notice that that's how they're installed. What that means is when I attach the bobbins, instead of the plastic support spacer uh, being up against the back or between the back of the slug bobbin and the base plate. It's now between the bobbin with the adjustable screw poles and the base plate. So I'm just switching that around a little bit in order to support it. And then the slug bobbin is the outer edge is supported by the four conductor wiring. So that's really the only differences, although they are, I think, really important. Uh, so that's basically, um, everything that goes into making those pickups. And as promised at the beginning of this episode, I wanted to make a special announcement about my CNC pickup winder, because I've been using this now for, I think over a year now, and I've been promising to offer plans so that you can build your own CNC pickup winder, as well as the software that writes the G code to run it. On Tuesday of next week, which will be September 13th, 2022, I'm going to post up a video at 12 noon Mountain Standard Time, which is going to explain the scope of this project so that you can decide whether or not it's something that you would be capable of doing. And then I'm also going to explain in a little bit more detail what that package of plans is going to include. So be sure to check that out. And until then, as always, take care, stay safe, click that thumbs up button, and I'll see you soon.